Well, hello, composers. It's Zach Heidi, aka Santa Claus, and today I'm here to talk about how to compose and orchestrate Christmas music. <laughs> Hair all over my mouth. Orchestral Christmas music has a very long tradition and has lots of different inspirations for how it's come to be. So we'll chat briefly about some of those inspirations, and then I'll follow up by demonstrating how I'd compose and orchestrate a short little orchestral Christmas piece. The MIDI for this is going to be available to everybody on Patreon, so if you want to grab that to study it or make your own mock-up, you can check that out. The link is in the description. And if you want to spread the Christmas cheer, I hope you'll leave a like and subscribe and maybe share it with some other people who you think would find it helpful. So first things first, what makes something sound Christmassy in the first place? There's a number of different inspirations for the sound, in my opinion. The first thing I'd attribute it to is sort of the orchestrations that were used in popular music for Christmas. So things like the Nutcracker Suite or Leroy Anderson's Sleigh Ride, they make use of certain instrumentations that we now associate with Christmas because of those pieces. Another element which is kind of similar would be the inspiration for those orchestrations in the first place. So things that have kind of icy, cold tones to them in the first place. A Celeste is a good example. Sleigh bells, obviously, because of the functionality of sleigh bells in Christmas time, in winter. Magical sounds like a mark tree or a bell tree, if you want to call it that. And the last thing I'd attribute to that kind of Christmas sound is actually sort of the religious elements in the first place. So the fact that they'd have like chorales or hymns that would be sung traditionally at Christmas time, those have specific sounds in terms of harmony and the orchestration, like a, a choir or a brass chorale, that kind of give that Christmassy tone. So all those things have to be factored in when you're actually writing the Christmas music in the first place and then moving on to the orchestration. So hopping over to Logic, if I can get my... <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. So first let's start off by writing a short little Christmas tune. So I wanna start with C major because C major has like a pure sound to me. And we're going to use some four-part voicings to make it imitate that hymn-like sound, the chorale sound. Oh, that's Mary ha that's, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Okay, let's change it. <laughs> okay, let's start with that. And let's get a little intro for this, so... Okay, now let's just, let's not go crazy with the composition. Let's just start with that. So you see the harmony's not that complicated. You know, we're ke keeping it pretty much in C, using F, G, and that simplicity kind of um, brings on this sense of innocence. And that innocence is what we want to feel Christmassy, innocent, magical, childish. So now let's work on the orchestration. So first off, uh, the shorts. Um, there's a couple routes you could go for that kind of Christmassy sound. The first would be uh, doing short strings. Right? That's a pretty classic one. The other sound that's really common is using uh, short horns, so that would sound like this. Um, sort of depends on uh, how intense you want it to feel and what orchestrations you've done before. So let's start off with just the short strings, so. Now let's use some pizzicato because I think that would be kind of a nice color. Now, a nice doubling for uh, pizzicato in general would be bassoons. That sounds really nice at the low register. Now, we need another pulse, and I want to add the sleigh bells in here. So the sleigh bells, instead of doing the eighth notes, are going to actually do the quarter notes. And that's going to create a secondary pulse kind of that's going underneath. Now, sleigh bells you don't want to overuse because, uh, you know, it's a very traditional classic color, but it's also very obvious to hear. Now, let's use triangle maybe for accents, so... And let's add in Celeste just to really get that Christmassy sound going. And let's just do some sort of maybe... Maybe... 
maybe we could have the flutes uh, support that kind of color. Let's try it, see what happens. I like that. Why don't we also have the clarinet join that? So these are kind of nice rounded colors and I associate that with kind of a Christmassy sound. Oboe can be used in a sort of melodic sense, um, but I like to use uh, these colors in tandem with each other. So let's just have it doing some sort of a, a harmony. Okay, I think that sounds good. Now let's just start with that so we can keep moving. Here's our beginning without the piano. Okay, next part. I could hear that potentially being brass, although maybe it could be oboe, so let's see. We have to factor in the register at the same time. So let's start with the horn and see. I think that could work. Let's also double that with a string to kind of warm it up a little bit. So let's start by using maybe viola. We could use violin, um, but that might be a little low in the register and this could be a little bit sweeter sounding, let's see. All right, now we have to decide, do we wanna keep a pulse or not? I think I'd like this part to sort of space out a little bit. So let's maybe do that chorale sound that I was talking about. So the chorale sound, let's use trombones. Okay, we have to figure out the chords. So what I like to do is actually work this out at the piano, so. 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 I like that, so. I think that sounds good. Okay, let's see if we have any missing voicing. So I love to use a piano roll for this reason uh, because voicing is very important for orchestration. So there's a little bit of space in between the melody and now we don't want to clutter it up too much, but maybe an instrument other than the brass could help sort of to fill that in. So let's use maybe a uh, violin one. I don't know about that second part. Let's see if we can adjust that. It's in trouble because it's doubling the trombone. Something like that. We won't go too crazy for everything. Um, now let's use tuba to kind of support that chorale sound. And we're gonna fill out these chords a little bit with harp as well. Now let's see if we can have maybe that lower trombone doing something different because right now it's kind of doubling the tuba and I don't know if we need that. That sounds pretty good. Let's hear all of the uh, harmonic rolls together. See, now you can see that there's something wrong here. Let's have that violin get a bit more sentimental on the top. Okay, I think that sounds pretty good. Now let's have the harp start doubling some of those things, so. Okay, and let's maybe accent some of the downbeats with glockenspiel. So it's gonna contrast the, ch the uh, Celeste before. Let's just 
just use it on the second half. Okay, now let's introduce the mark tree as a sort of um, transition into this section. Not bad. Now, it still feels a little bit empty. So let's see what we can do to sort of fill that up. Maybe we'll have uh, the bases actually start to sustain now. So we'll just have a double the tuba. So for convenience, I'm just going to copy paste it over. This is why it helps to have uh, a template that's kind of balanced. And maybe we'll have... a little bit of movement in the middle. So cello and violin two are gonna kind of rock back and forth. Let's do it in the marcato patch so it's easier for me to play. And then we'll pop it over to the legato. Something like that. Now normally I don't work this fast, um, but for the camera, I'm doing it <laughs> a little quicker than usual. Okay, let's solo out just the strings so we can hear what they sound like, make sure there's no interference. Not too bad. Maybe actually let's have violin two play the melody and let's have the cello double it at the octave and then have this viola playing that little ostinato pattern I'm doing. I like that. I think that sounds really good. Now let's have uh, one more wind instrument. Let's use the oboe. So oboe is a nice color, but in this case you see that it's kind of low in the register. So let's actually use English horn instead. Uh, that'll kind of give us the same tone, but maybe a little bit sweeter sounding. Flute at the second half to support that uh, jump up with the glockenspiel. Just about there now for this section. Let's add a suspended cymbal. Maybe a second one here. And lastly, let's double up that horn line with a trumpet. So that's gonna make it feel a bit more brass chorale, and I think that's kind of the sound we want. The second part of that, I wonder if we could harmonize that. So instead of ba da 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 da, could we maybe do ba da 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 da? I like that a lot. Second half, let's also, I know I keep saying one more thing, but let's really add one more thing and let's add the uh, orchestral chimes. Now sometimes chimes can get a little bit muddy, like in this case, so let's take that mid register and just cut that. It looks like I tried to. Okay, I think that section's good, and now let's move on to the final part. Okay, so we have a lot of kind of uh, pushing of those chords, a lot of emphasis on those chords. So let's bring that out by having the tuba again. I know I want the tuba active, and let's just quickly double that with the uh, cello and the contrabass. Let's have the violins take that melody. Here. Da, 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 da. 
I kind of want to run. Now for that little run there, I'm gonna actually program that with um, the Cinematic Studio Series runs because those sound really good. Pre-programmed runs just sound better than doing it yourself. Like that just sounds great. Maybe have it come in a little bit earlier. And what's really cool is you can just take it, if you have the winds and the strings, you could just grab that, pop that in here, take the same thing and paste it in. Now I hear immediately, and I always try to follow my ear. Bottom. Do we wanna have maybe the trumpet do chords sure da, da, da. i really want the legato so i'm gonna take the extra second to actually program that too so you can just move down the line so if you're doing this you can do Okay, and last one. All right, so now we have all of those. All right, so let's do um, the trombones. Okay, and then again, just checking our voicings for the brass section, because that's the most full right now. Now the brass section is dominating the harmony, which means we don't have to work that hard with the other sections for the harmony. So let's just have maybe the violas double the violins an octave down. So maybe let's just actually have them pick up on the second half. Let's see what the strings are missing. So not very filled in here. Let's have um, the second violin play tremolo and match what the uh, horn was doing. And then in this section, it's not very full. So let's just have um, the violas divisi. Kind of doing what the trombo uh, trombones were doing, yeah. Now obviously that's a big run there. So we need to have um, probably mark tree and suspended cymbal. Now let's have the flutes, the winds. Um, I think we could honestly have them double the melody. Have the oboe do that as well, uh, but the octave lower. Clarinet can do that as well. And let's have the bassoons fill in those lower harmonies. Yes, yeah. And then this part. So we don't have any melody here. So let's have uh, maybe clarinet. Do, 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 do. It's okay, but it needs a little bit more support. So maybe the English horn keeps going. No, 
not bad. Uh, let's have, I don't like when these clarinets are super jacked up in modulation, they sound a little honky. So let's grab those and we need something to double this for sure. Maybe instead we can have the chimes actually save for the second half, so. works okay and now let's take the timpani let's do a timpani roll and let's also have maybe a mark tree on that big swell Gotta fix that stuck note that's happening in here. Ah, I know what we can add. Let's add in choir on the second half because that'll make it sound super Christmassy. So just sopranos and tenors, we don't have to go crazy with anything. But these have nice divisies, which is kind of cool. Okay, gotta fix those trombones. And let's have the uh, tenors join in unison, I think. I think I'm cool with that. Now we're missing the harp part and uh, the celeste became inactive. Little cheesy of an ending, let's not have that ending, I don't like that. Let's add a harp run. Really want to exaggerate that harp run, so let's really make sure it kind of sticks out. Even more. Yep. And let's add a piatti hit on that where it lands. Okay, I think we are good to go. Let's listen to the final product. There you have it, folks. That is how you orchestrate and compose Christmas music. Wow, the sun really washed my face out. Okay, well, if you found that helpful, I hope you will leave a like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps me out. And like I said, the MIDI is gonna be available to all of my patrons. And I'm also gonna include the MP3 in there because I feel like I'm in the Christmas spirit and that's what I wanna do. So thank you all so much for watching. If you have questions, leave them in the comments section. And I do one-on-one -on -one lessons. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out in the description as well. Thanks so much. Have a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a wonderful new year. Thank you.